Welcome to the Women in Control live virtual panel. My name is Nadia. I'm the founder of Women in Control. Uh, Women in Control is a platform that I started, I thought it was two years, it was actually three years ago, um, to empower women that work in the business, um, music and creative industry. I really wanted to empower women to start bigging themselves up um, encourage them to start talking about their achievements and shine a spotlight on amazing women that I know um, that don't really get that shine. And I feel us as women, we're really just happy kind of sometimes just sitting in the background, just getting on with the work. But I think it's important that we get together and just talk about how incredible we are and the amazing work that we've done. Um, today's session is uh, all about content creation in lockdown. So I'm really excited to, to be going through that with you guys today. I've got an incredible guest with me as well, who is is a creative director and stylist um, called Rasheen. And I worked with her um, and came across her work um, through another stylist of mine and Rasheen was just starting out and assisted on a couple of shoots. So that's how I met her and I followed her on I Instagram. Such a then. I was such a then. I was thinking I was like 18 when I met you. I literally just oh, started oh, and it was through then. <laughs> I was so nervous. Oh, well, so yeah, I met Rasheen on um, various shoots, like I said, when she was assisting um, on, on, on those shoots. And I followed her on Instagram and continued to watch her journey and I've seen her just flourish and grow and work with so many different brands and just do some amazing creative campaigns and uh, most recently I saw her create some incredible self-shoot campaigns um, in lockdown and um, I thought it'd be really important for us to have that discussion because I feel like you know myself I work in more like a business side and and machines more on a creative side but I feel like we're both creating a lot of content in lockdown so I feel like it'd be a really good discussion um, for us to kind of get together so um, Rasheen I'd love to hand over to you if you could introduce yourself and let everyone know a little bit about you before we get started. Um, so I'm I'm a creative director and a stylist. I've been in industry for I think like five years now um, in total. Um, really properly out in industry for about a year and a half. Um, as you can tell from the accent, I'm not from London, but I live in London now. Um, so I'm from Belfast, grew up in Ireland my entire life. and uh, Kind of moved to London to like pursue um, the creative career, essentially. Um, I'm super DIY with everything that I do. Like even if I wasn't in lockdown, everyone knows like who like works works like with me is like they see me like disappear off for a while and then I'll come back with like something like I've found <laughs> that I just want to like throw on or like something I've made or something I've painted like for backdrops and stuff like that. So everyone's used to my DIY ethos anyway, but I've just had this time to kind of explore it like a lot more during this period of time. So usually um, before this whole situation with lockdown, your day-to-day -day job was like creative director and stylist. So can you talk us a little bit about what that is and what your day-to-day -day role would actually have been and how you got started into that? Um, so on a, on a normal like day-to-day -day basis, like I work from home anyway, because a lot of the time I'm either working for a collective that I work for, um, which is also for female empowerment, um, and, or else what I'm doing is I'm creating editorial concepts or I'm pulling in clothing. Um, another day-to-day -day basis for me is actually like running around London with a suitcase, collecting clothing or returning clothing. That's like a massive part of it. Another day could be I'm um, painting. Honestly, that could be like a day for me, like where I'm creating like set backdrops or whatever. And then other days can be on set. So it's very like varying for me what my day will include. And the great thing is with the job that I do, I am really my own boss. It's a positive and a negative thing because you don't get to switch off, but a positive thing in the fact that I am the one like creating all the work that I do, I plan out what my day will entail. Um, I got into it, I always knew from like a, a child, like literally from a child, my parents knew I was a weird kid, like they were fine with it, like they were like, it's fine, you, you, you go to you. Um, so from like very young age, I was always like artistic and then I studied art. I, when I moved to London, I had to go to uni. Not particularly because I wanted to, everyone like cusses at me for saying this, not because well, I wanted to, because I needed to in order to move. Um, so I did fashion promotion and imaging in university, um, graduated, I was assisting at the same time as going to uni and I was also, that's actually when you met me, I was still in uni when you met me. Um, I assisted, worked on magazines and just built up a portfolio, really got networking with people and then it just, it is literally like building Lego bricks. 
is how I would say it, especially if you're trying to do something creative, because the only way that people will start to recognize what you're doing or even get to know your style or your aesthetic is the more that you do. It's it's a lot more about walking the walk than talking the talk, in my in my personal opinion. How has the coronavirus and the lockdown like affected your work? Like I know um, I had Nisha on here a few weeks ago and other creatives as well. And a lot of stylists and creatives are self-employed or freelance. So they work on a shoot by shoot basis or commission basis. Um, and obviously we can't shoot at the minute. So we can't do a lot of video shoots. So that's affected a lot of creatives work. The effects on my job, huge, like huge because Obviously, like you said, we work on a shoot to shoot basis. Like it's, you get a commission and then you do the commission and then it's the next one and then the next one. And that's just kind of how it rolls. I'm quite lucky in some regard in that I have a little bit of income coming in because of the collective that I work for. We have, we normally do panel talks offline um, and we've just taken them online and done digital ID TV panels. So something quite similar to this, um, which is still bringing like a little bit of money in, not the way I would normally have money. Um, but anything in regard to set um, at all, that kind of normal thing that I do massively changed. But I was like, I need to really 180 that and like figure out ways to like still be creative whilst, whilst this whole thing is going on. So I've actually had like some commissions anyway, like some music videos and stuff because I started to show skills that I don't necessarily like show normally because I don't have the space in London to like paint or create the way that I would prefer to at this point in time in my career so I was like I just need to figure out ways to switch it do you know what I mean and um, before um, I get stuck into the next section I just wanted you to tell us a bit about some campaigns that you've worked um, and some campaigns mm -hmm. that you've done that people would know of because I know on your Instagram page you've got some incredible projects that you've created directed and stuff so just tell us some some standout ones that you've done i think you recently did one with ray right which were you sustainable yeah with that one was insane because this is what i'm saying like it's lego bricks because i wasn't initially so that the one that i did was the cover for hunger their future issue which was basically essentially just using sustainable materials and materials that are found or um completely diy essentially like everything had to be made um, and was made on the spot for her like literally the cover where she's wearing like the Ikea bag I swear to god I made that in two minutes from half an Ikea bag and some jumper cords that I found in their store like behind. Another one that was um, quite notable is I did one for like a brand in Hong Kong I don't know how they found me um, but yeah it was like an international campaign for like just a clothing brand essentially like billboards and stuff like that tv adverts all that kind of thing which was kind of crazy because that happened to me when i was 21 and i was like what like my work work is actually like international and i'm like 21 do you know what i mean um apart from that like editorials and stuff like that i i particularly love editorial work because i get to be like as crazy as i am um i get full freedom so i've done stuff for like just magazine i've done stuff for noctis notion uh assisted on stuff for like king kong um but yeah just a lot of magazines a lot of music videos when i assisted nisha i did some, so many great music videos you've just been creating some incredible like self-shooting campaigns on your social media so i wanted to show this one which i thought was so so good and another one and these are just three that I've just pulled out. So I would really recommend that you go and check out Rasheen's Instagram page to see the incredible um, content that, that she's made. And she's gonna be talking us through how she actually creates this because they are all self-shot at home with an iPhone. Um, and yeah, when I called you about this, um, doing this session, you actually showed me your setup. I was so, so surprised that it was just so yeah. <laughs> and you did it all yourself. So um, Rasheen is going to now take us through, we're going to go through like a little step-by-step -step tutorial of like how um, she comes up with the concepts and, and the methods that she uses to actually go about and um, create these campaigns. Where I normally start is in this book. <laughs> um, so basically what I do is I'm, I'm kind of like insane anyway, like with my thought processes, like my brain works like incredibly like quickly. So what I do is like if I have an idea, like literally it could be, it could be the worst idea 
no idea is a bad idea in my eyes. Like it could be a horrible idea, but it's not a bad idea because it can lead to something like pretty incredible when you come back to it, like down the line. So I just literally take everything that comes in my brain and it goes in this book. So this is the page that started me doing all the self shoots, which was just like, I literally just started jotting down like all the ideas that I had. And then after a while, if one idea like sticks or if I feel like there's like a purpose to it, a lot of the work that I create, for example, the yellow one that you first um, showed there, that one is to do for me, that's to do with mental health because I feel like a lot of people are going to come out of this situation with a lot of mental health problems that necessarily they haven't encountered before. And I personally like have suffered with mental health issues in the past, so it's very important to me. So I developed that one and... The sketch that started out that one is, and this is what I mean. It doesn't have to be like, you don't have to be like a crazy, like artistic person. This is what that initial sketch was. I don't know if you can see, where it's just like, I just pulled the ideas from um, Van Gogh's idea, like the myth about him that he used to eat yellow paint to get the yellow inside him. And then I love like, I love really, really like aggressive hip hop, like really, because I used to listen to a lot of rock music. So I love really aggressive hip hop. So um, that was from IDK. So the background is from IDK's album cover. Um, and then what I'll do is there's two methods to me doing it. So I either completely do it by myself, where it's like um, I'll paint the background. Um, should I show the backgrounds? So yeah. I have like kind of pain and how I do it. Okay, I'm gonna take you off the, the cell that I use. What is a little tour of your home studio set up? Yeah, so it's not a big space. Like you could literally use like a corner of your room. And I just, I don't even use these two lights. Like I literally use two soft boxes, which I got off Amazon for like 60 quid, I think. The whole setup is a hundred. And you get a backdrop stand in it too. And then what I do in order to create the backgrounds, this is just a duster sheet that I am, um, basically when I paint, I put it on the floor and it ended up being a background. Um, this is the IDK like yellow, <laughs> yellow one that I had. Um, and what happens is like I end up painting over. I have one board that I use again and again. So that was like the third photo that you showed. And then this was like the first photo that you showed. And what I do is, so I just paint it, use a white emulsion on the bottom, and then just start building color on it. Um, I'll use like spray paint or whatever I have available to me. And then I also use the other side of the board. And this is just, this was one, you'll see these two on my Instagram, you didn't show these, but these, it's just magazines that I've done with PVA Glow. And this one is another painted one that I did was more playboy kind of orientated. It can be fabric backgrounds. You can use literally anything you have available to you, like curtains. Um, do you know, like even like things that you use to like a throw? Do you know like a throw you put on your sofa? That is a background. Like people don't realize this. Like that to me is a background. Anything you have available to you. If you have like bed sheets, or a background, anything <laughs> that you have that has a pattern on it or that you can create a pattern on, to me is a background. Um, your wall can be one because if you just pin up some magazines, even if you're renting, get yourself white tack, not blue tack, because you're going to ruin your walls. Um, and just stick up, just stick up some like paper, or you can even make it, you can draw it and then put it up. You can spray paint it and then put it up. Like if, if you guys were to go to my Instagram, you'll even see in editorials. I do exactly the same thing. So I make spray painted backgrounds or I use fabrics. Um, I use um, fabric backdrops as well that I get from like Dolston Mills or I order them online. You know, it's nothing like crazy. And then after I've created the background and the background's always something to do with the concept, what I'm trying to create. Um, I set up my soft boxes and bear in mind I'm not a lighting person I don't have any experience in like photography whatsoever like I literally my best friend is a photographer and he cringes every time I set up a tripod because it's just so like embarrassing to watch um, so yeah I'll set up two soft boxes and then literally and this this is the funniest part this is what made you laugh Nadia <laughs> this is my tripod 
to take my photos <laughs> on. <laughs> I just build it to like whatever height I need. And then what I do is I take my phone. So I have another phone here. I'm just going to use this one. And how, do you, how am I going to do this? I'm going to put this between my knees. I do this and I don't have a tripod. I have a thing of sales tape and I will literally like, this one's too, too small, but I will put it in like that and then just angle it to whatever way. I will put it on a self timer, 10 second self timer, and just take the photo using the normal camera. I don't set it on portrait mode. I don't do it. I have no idea how to work anything technical, so I don't do any of that. I literally put it on, if you was to swipe right, right on your iPhone right now and stick it in some cell tape and put it on a 10 second timer, that's literally what I do. So it's not in any way like complicated what I'm doing. And then, depending if it's me on my own, I literally take it into physical and I edit it. Brightness, contrast, saturation, no face tune, nothing literally just that is it um and then you'll see the more complicated ones such as the one that i did that was the the first one which is where like my skin is yellow on it um all that is is i have a friend who i have i have loads of friends to be honest who are like graphic designers or editors they're all sitting in the house board right now they want to create content so i'll send them my sketch and be like can you make me yellow or <laughs> can you like give me wings or something like that and they're like at the moment at least um they're happy to do it because it's like they have the time and they have the opportunity to do it talk us through um this one in a little bit more detail this one is literally so what is on the ground is um just some fabric like literally just some fabric i don't even know i think i took it from a shoot because they were going to throw it out if you're on, by the way, if you're like creative and you're on shoots and people like, because so much gets thrown out in our industry. And like I said, I'm so DIY and I think it comes from coming from Ireland, like, and like being like, being resourceful and like coming from like a country background where like my dad just had like materials around and I used to just like steal the materials. So I just take them from shoots. Whenever people are going to throw them out, like that can be used for something else. Like you will see that fabric used in my shoots so often in so many different contexts. Um, even in my self shooting, I think I've used it three times by now. Um, and then the, the, what the background obviously is this background here which I just painted yellow paint um, and some spray paint. And then the board that you see is literally a piece of cardboard that I painted yellow. And then the editor put on the words. Um, this one is again, the backdrop that I showed you before. I just painted my face, like I painted the backdrop and took the photo. <laughs> that, one was like, that one was the first one I did. So it's super like uncomplicated, like, um, it's not okay yeah it's not face paint if you're going to do it use face paint because you definitely shouldn't be putting acrylic on your face but I put acrylic on my face anyway <laughs> that one where it's the the painted backdrop like the abstract kind of painting and um, I actually just painted that at the beginning to paint it and then I was like I kind of revisited a project I did when I was 16 where I painted someone's face as the backdrop and I was like I'm gonna just try it and see what happens um, cause I'm very like that when it comes to like everything I do, I'm like, I'm gonna just try it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Not everything you create. I just want to say this as well. Not everything you create, especially in this time has to be for anything. It doesn't have to go anywhere. It can just be for you to do it and to have fun doing it. And that's literally how this whole process started. Um, this one, an editor helped me on this one as well. This backdrop is the same as this one. And all I did is I got some really, really rubbish spray paints off Amazon. And I swear to God, they were like four pounds. Like they were terrible. Um, and I just like random. I don't even spray paint normally. Like I'm not a graffiti artist. I just like started spraying it. I stuck some like bubbles in my hair and that's pretty much what you're seeing. And my, my red hand in that is painted with acrylic paint. And then the rest is an editor has, has changed my skin. Um, and then this, this thing is like from an artist that I know. I was just like, I just like it. So I'm gonna just stick it on my face. <laughs> so cool. Now I'm gonna take us out of there now. Yeah, it's, it's incredible how you just like set this up 
yourself at home and, and shoot it on your iPhone. I can't believe it. I know. It's just like, I think, because um, I always say, like, and I, this is going to sound so cringy, but it's kind of true. Um, before anything else, like before I'm a creative director, before I'm a stylist, like before any of that, like I consider myself an artist because my entire life I have just liked to make things and do things and create things and build things and construct things and just find like weird ways of like doing things because that's like, that's what was normal to me. You know what I mean? And, and obviously like growing up in like rural Ireland, I spent a lot of my time on my own. Do you know what I mean? So I only have my imagination to keep me occupied. So it was just like the, the whole process just feels natural to me. Do you know what I mean? And if you're not someone who likes like stepping in front of the camera, you can do this like with objects. Do you know what I mean? An object can replace yourself. Whenever I'm doing it, I use my front facing camera because I find it like I, I can obviously like right now I can see see what I'm doing do you know what I mean like if I um if I turn it the other way like I have no idea I might do like an hour's worth of shooting and then it's it's like pointing over here do you know what I mean so um yeah I, I use my front facing camera um you do have to flip it back around after you do it because you, you'll be the wrong way around so just like be conscious of that like also like there's this thing like you, you'll think the photos look bad flip them and and then see what they look like because you will look kind of strange um when you just take them like normal this is something that is definitely stepping outside of your comfort zone because like you said you're a creative director and stylist and and like myself we're kind of generally behind the camera we're not like in front of the camera doing front facing kind of work um and i know you only recently actually started taking pictures right I literally, and you, you honestly, anyone who's known me for like a couple of years will be like, facts, like this is true. Before November, and you can go on my page and actually see that this is the fact, there's probably like two or three pictures of me before November on my page. I literally would have been like, if someone went to put a camera in my face, I would have literally put my hand over it. And like, that's strange because you definitely wouldn't perceive that from the work that I've created like recently. I literally wouldn't let you take a photo of me. I was so anti being in front of camera because I felt like it was going to, in some regard, dilute my professionalism or it was going to have people in the industry not take me as seriously as I would like them to take me. Um, so I think the most important thing, like if you're going to like step in front of camera, always make sure that you're speaking with an authentic voice do you know what i mean like I, like that's the only thing like unless you're like unless you are adopting a character then that's fine do you know what i mean like if you are someone who keeps like your personal and your professional life completely separate and you know you're a musician for example and you have like an art alter ego like fine like be as crazy and as wild as you want because that's not actually you but if i feel like if you're like yourself or like i were your work and your personality are so intrinsically linked because you have to be both within your professional life. Just make sure that it is authentic to you. For example, mine's is authentic to me because I'm a DIY artist. Like you get on your editorial, the same kind of energy and vibe and everything like that, that you see in my self shoots. I can give you that for you as well do you know what I mean so it's, it's about building like an aesthetic that is uh, authentic to who you are but I was definitely like anti it definitely anti it before November like just self-confidence that's yeah. all but that's why I thought it was so important for myself and you to have that conversation because like I said we both you know you're more creative and I'm more in in the business side and it's like none but neither of us have kind of come on camera but we're both really proactively creating a lot of content on our social media um, and I think it's important just to um, find and explore what content that you can create like it can take different forms like you said it doesn't have it could be photos of yourself it could be photos of objects it could be live webinars like I do it could be YouTube content it could be audio content um, there's so many um, different forms that it can take but I just think it's important to like explore it and Definitely, I would um, recommend to step outside your comfort zone because um, like yourself, Rasheen, I had never done any front-facing like camera 
work before my this uh, the first live webinar that I did at the end of March, I believe. That was the first time that I'd ever actually jumped up wow. and done stuff. And I've been like in the industry for 19 years. And similarly, if anybody came to me with a camera, I would literally run a mile and be like, get out of here. I'm not doing no. <laughs> interviews with me, you're not getting any time with me whatsoever. But um, I feel like we have to step outside our comfort zone and when you start to do that, you just grow and get so much from it. Um, you know, you're just holding yourself back. And uh, I, in the session that I did last week, um, I was talking to Tiwa, who um, was a stylist actually, and then she went on to um, create her own salon. And, and we were talking about like the fear of failure and what holds us back from actually releasing this content, you know, like it just, but you have to really dissect it and understand, well, why am I not going forward with these things? Why am I holding myself back? What have I got to lose? What am I actually afraid of? Um, and what's the, the worst thing that's going to happen? I feel like it is important um, when you're doing social media content and you're putting things out there to remember and understand that whatever you put out there, anyone can see it. That I think what you just said is like exactly true because I know even when you met me, I was very meek in comparison to the, the woman speaking to you and I, and that comes with age, it comes with experience, it comes from like knowing yourself, but also like, I swear to God, like the most productive I have ever been in my life was from January to March, which is sad because of this whole situation, it was January to March, because I finally, from like stepping in front of the camera and everything like that, I was like, I finally have the confidence that I have always needed to be like, you know what? I am good. I am great at what I do. And I know that I'm good at what I do. So why, when everyone else seems to be shouting about it? <laughs> do you know what I mean? And like, I think a lot of us get frustrated at that. We're like, why, why are they getting right? And it's because they're ready to say, I am good. Look at what I can do. And I'm quite... I wouldn't say like, I'm just someone who doesn't feel the need to shout, shout, shout about, about what I do. And I think someone said it in like a talk that I was listening to the other day. The point is don't shout at people, shout at the world, shout out at the world at what you're capable of doing and just put it out there. But if you're not putting it out for it, there, no one is going to know what you do, do you know what I mean? No one is gonna know the level of capabilities that you have if you're not willing to just say, like literally put your hand up and be like, hi, do you know what I mean? That's, yeah, that's so important. And um, we also wanted to challenge you guys that are involved in the session as well to um, create your own content. So Rasheen, do you wanna talk us uh, through like the little challenge that we've made? Yeah. What we wanna do is set a challenge called Girls, Girls, Girls. And basically, I want you to self-shoot something, and that can be that can be like an object. It can be like a collage. It can just be the set that you create, or whatever you want to do. And just surrounding that thing, whatever comes to your mind when you think of that phrase, "girls, girls, girls," because I think women are so multifaceted, and we will all perceive our own femininity in a very different context, like. If I was to set that brief, even between you and I, we're going to come up with like completely different like ideas. And that to me is so incredibly interesting because I think that's important as something to show. So yeah, basically use a fabric backdrop. That is the other thing. So there's two, two restrictions. It has to be about girls, girls, girls. And the second restriction is a fabric backdrop. So by the way, fabric can be paper. So that doesn't exclude magazines. Like it can be like someone just put in before a bed sheet, tablecloth, throw something you make, something you create. Even if you like take like um, some paper that you have and you draw on it and you just put it behind your head. It's to inspire you guys to, to create and push us to try something new and outside your comfort zone. But you know, you don't have to share it. It doesn't mean you have to uh, publish it or anything. You don't have to share it anymore. It's just to inspire you guys to, to step outside your comfort zone and like leave fear behind, like just try something different. I don't take pictures of myself, you know, like I'm not like a selfie queen. I've never done that before, but I'm going to do the challenge because like you said, we've got such different aesthetics and um, we'll, I'll, how I want to represent myself will be completely different to how you represent yourself or how you interpret this brief. And so it's going to be really interesting to see how everybody does it. Um, but like I said, you know, 
I'm going to experiment, try it out, but I'm not used to, to taking photos. But with all of the, the tools that you've given us today, I want to, to challenge myself to try something different. And you never know what's going to come from that. Um, I really believe it's all about pushing yourself, pushing those boundaries and getting yourself uncomfortable. And that encourages growth and change. Like I said, these, um, these webinars, I've never done anything on camera before and just pushing myself to step out of that. I just feel like I've grown the community um, so wide and so much. And we've been able to bring so many women together that have been able to share their inspiring stories, their inspiring knowledge um, that can really help to, uh, everybody else. And also once you start prioritizing yourself and, and believing in yourself um, and allowing yourself to like let go of that fear you just make incredible things happen and you just bring so much more opportunity to you so i would definitely in the first instance just try to experiment pre creating content with the intention for it that, that it's for yourself it's not about mm -hmm. creating content for right we want to do this because you're going to get so much likes from this or that the first intention has to be what is going to be a good release for yourself and when you're doing things like you mentioned Rasheen um that are authentic and, and fit with yourself that's actually when you're going to get the best connection the best results from from yeah. anybody when you stop um focusing on that and, and and start focusing on other things so i also wanted to talk about mental health and, and social media and I guess uh, a lot of people have been saying that they feel a lot of pressure because mm -hmm. people are being so productive or some people are like, oh, I'm, I'm learning a language or I'm doing this course or I'm starting mm -hmm. a business. And, and you can feel really pressurized um, on social media to be achieving and be doing so much. And I'm um, definitely really conscious of like the time that I spend on social media because I do think that uh, it can lead you down a dark path sometimes if you're you know comparing yourself to others or concerned about what likes you get what feedback you're getting um it can really take you on an, an inward journey and something i really do to help me with that is uh i've set screen times on my phone so i have like mm -hmm. 15 minutes a day for instagram 10 minutes for twitter for example but um i'm finding in lockdown i'm actually using social media a lot more which disturbs me yeah. in one way but at the same time, I'm also creating more content. So I'm using it in a healthy way. Um, and that's, I wanted to, for you to touch on that as well about, you know, like I know that you started this um, process and doing these um, shoots for yourself. Um, I think like, just to establish, like I have no problems talking about this because <laughs> I think it's like an important, very important topic to think about. But like I've massively, massively since I was about eight years old suffered from mental health problems. Like, and the only, thing that ever ever relieved any sense of that for me was creating stuff so I'm very much like and even you'll see like if you do check my Instagram like you'll see on like my posts that I literally right if you do not want to be productive creativity does not equal productivity to me those are not one in the same to me they're very very separate to me like in fact like I think I'm 10 times more creative when I'm not being productive when I'm just like, honestly, like just fucking about and trying things. And I'm just seeing how it goes. Like that's honestly what led, out of all the ones that I've done, the ones that haven't been planned have been the ones that I love the most. Because I'm just like, it, it's this thing of like, you know, when you were a kid, when you were like six or five, whatever, a kid, um, and your, your mom used to give you like paper, or whatever like someone used to give you paper and some crayons and you used to just draw to draw it didn't need to go on bloody instagram it didn't need to go on twitter or someone didn't need to see it for you to feel good about what you made like you used to hold that painting up and be like look what i did and it was more a sense of like self-achievement than it was for anyone else and i think that's the thing that is very scary about social media to me and i'm not gonna lie like for a period of time like I got very sucked into that kind of like mentality, especially like in the job that we do, especially I'm a visual creator, like <laughs> Instagram is like huge for my industry. And I got very sucked into the idea of like, I need to create this to see how many people will like what I create. See the minute I started to step outside that and not care at all what people <laughs> thought anymore. I just became so much more happy. I became so much more myself. I created 10 times better work. I was, even though productivity is not linked to creativity, I was more productive because the worry of it wasn't in the back of my mind. Like, 
how many people are liking this? Like, I really do not care anymore because it's not important in the grand scheme of things. Like, it's about um, taking control of your social media and not letting um, yourself be controlled by, by social media. Um, and um, yeah, I just wanted to go to the poll results that I did at the beginning of the session. Just interesting to know that the platform that everybody uses the most, 100% said Instagram. Um, of course. And, yeah. <laughs> Twitter was second and, and Facebook was third. Um, platform uh, that people like using the least, we had 50% dislike for Pinterest and 70% um, run three to four social media platforms. So um, I would um, say to focus only on like two to three platforms. If there's platforms that you dislike, just don't use them. Oh, yeah. Rasheen, how many platforms do you use? <laughs> One. I literally am only on Instagram. I use Instagram. I don't really use Twitter. Um, I like to be like just super efficient. I just like to stay on top of my social media, be in control of it. I don't go on there to scroll. I don't look at really everything else that's going on. So I actually bulk create a lot of content and um, I'll maybe do like a month's content in advance. Um, and then I create like a schedule for my social media because I'm just really consciously trying to make sure that I'm in control of my social media and it's not controlling and consuming too much of my time. So I have set every day, I know what kind of content that I would like to post on my Women in Control page. So on the Monday, I'll post an empowering quote. On Tuesday, I'll take a woman, um, like a, a massive woman and just uh, get a quote from her that inspires me. Um, on a Wednesday, I might spotlight an ambassador um, from Women in Control and spotlight and talk about them. And then on Thursday, I'll um, announce the webinars and post that. And then <laughs> on Friday, I'll do like a tweet of the day. So I've really like blocked it out like every day and I do it um, for six days a week. And I actually bulk schedule those. So the uh, flyers and the webinars, I actually just manually put those in every week, but the quotes and stuff, they're all programmed in. They just go live on my Instagram. So I'll sit there for like a few hours and just create my quotes, create um, inspiring women, I've created all my ambassador profiles and I've got those there for like the next like two months, I'd say, like so that I've got that content up front and <laughs> schedule it on so that it's done because otherwise I just feel like every day, every week, you're just like consumed by, oh, I've got to post on social media, I've got to create more content. So just finding mm -hmm. ways to like be in control of it and don't do platforms and don't use platforms that um, you don't like using. So I don't use Facebook at all. I'm not on there personally. And I would stress as, as well, again, like uh, we all do need to be conscious of the, the things that we are posting on social media because prospective employers, clients, they're all going to go to, to your pages. And um, if you do post like loads of different things that are like all, all over the place. Like you said, Rasheen, if you go onto your page, it's really clear and concise. It's kind of like a, an online CV, if you say of your work and we can get your aesthetic, we can know what you're going to get if you book you and you want to work with you. If you're a creative, you need to get on the dots right now because it is a social networking platform for solely creatives. Like you, you need to go on it and, and get your profile on there and get your like website on there. And do you know what I mean? It's not just, the social realm is not everything. Um, I'm conscious that we're running out of time, so I do want to, to get some um, questions done as well. Somebody mm -hmm. asked like, what scheduling tool I use. Um, I do a lot of um, Pinterest and Instagram, so I use Tailwind and I use the Facebook Creator Studio as well. Um, um, I use Preview. Preview, it, Preview is very good if you're a visual creator in order to, because um, it allows you to move your grids about. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't allow you to put captions or anything, but it allows you to test, for example, if you create editorials, in what order the editorial, break it up, lock it up. So that's what I use. Okay, great. And I've got a question from Jackie. What's the best way to connect to editors for photos? Do you pay them? Oh, no, I don't. I don't. At the minute, obviously, if I was like in the reality of life and like it was an editorial and stuff, I would have budget. I would be able to give them. Um, I just have some really great friends. Your first mode of contact in anything that you do should be your friends and your family. Do you have anyone within them or do they know anyone within them that could help you out? So I just happen to have been working on music videos and editorials and everything. I've just built up like a quite a good contact base. So one of them saw what I was doing and was like, yo, if you ever need anything edited for, for you, like let me know. But like I said before, you got to put it out first. 
for people to know what you're doing. So put it out. If someone likes it, some people will come to you. People will come to you. Yeah, and don't be afraid to teach yourself as well. Like I create all my own content. I'm not a trained graphic designer. I've just taught myself so that I have the tools that I need to be able to create the content and promote what I need to promote. Um, I've created my own website. So just go out there. There's so much um, information available to you. Use YouTube, Google everything. I just learn how to do everything myself because I'm conscious of like, yeah, just budgets and, and, and being able to. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. Um, from Martha who says um, she loves your work as a musician wanting Thank to create you. more content on Instagram would you say to try to keep to a theme with your content and your photos oh oh god I'm the worst person to ask for that because I'm a creative director okay like yeah I have a lot of style of work I'm a creative director so my whole job is to have like a thousand different concepts and like aesthetics so I'm I would say if you're a musician okay this is my actual advice, right? I was like, I need to think about this. USP, what is your unique selling point? Mine is that I'm DIY. I can make things. I can actually physically make something for you that not other people can do. And that can be in the realm of everything. So you've got, for example, best example to use, like, and you might cringe at this, but is Princess Nokia for me, okay? She does such a wide variety of music but you know her style, you know her tone of voice, and you know her aesthetic. She's a bruja, okay? And she's from New York City. She's a Bronx chick, okay? So that's her USP. She is, like, a bit, like, you know, like, tough. Like, she ready to, like, go, do you know what I mean? So I think USP is your important thing to find. And then you can do whatever you want as long as for each time it relates back to that. For example, I, I read another piece of advice the other day that said, figure out what the one word is that describes you. For example, mine says weird. Okay, weird. Literally as broad as that. But everything everything that I put out, every single piece of content, every context, every story, everything that I talk about, everything that I wear, everything that I do with my heart, all is related to that word. So if yours is like girly, girly can be in so many different contexts, but it all has to like, feedback into that is if it's boss bitch feedback into that what but remember that key usp of what you are in everything that you do wicked that's such good advice i'm going to take two more questions so we run over time so um dana has, how long have you been working in your particular field this is probably maybe like surprise people but i've just turned 23 um so i only left uni when i was 21 um so i've been working in industry since i was 18 in terms of like assisting and stuff like that but for doing my own work um i probably well, 21 to 23 um so not that long of a period of time but um uh, as i'm sure like natalie like you know i have worked damn hard <laughs> for those five years like it hasn't been like a case of like I do one shoot one shoot here I literally worked so so hard so even though like I've only been in industry like properly for about two years I always said like, I have about five years experience for the amount that I have done and the amount that I have worked and um yeah the final question um what is asked from Tinashe you said Rasheen what is what makes you smile more the creating or seeing the final creation Oh, okay. I, do you know what? It's probably, it's, it's not the final thing. It's not like when the photos comes out or when the videos come out, it's the set day personally for me, because it's like, I, I know that you're like so aware of this. See, when you're a creative director, you're a status, the whole process is so stressful. Like it is so stressful. It's also great. I love the process still. Like, I think process is a very important thing to show. But my personal favorite is set day because literally people will see me. Like, it, it will, like, happen and I'll turn around and I'll be like... And they're like, you're really happy, aren't you? Like, you, I'm not, like... You know, I'm quite blank-faced when I'm on set because I've got so much going on in my head. And then when someone sees a smile come out of me on set, they're like, yeah, you're happy with what you did, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, because it's not... The thing with set as well... I think some of the best creative directors, and this is just my personal opinion, are so willing to have everyone else's input who is on set for that day. 
So the makeup artist is going to bring their vibes. Stylist is going to bring their vibes. And like normally they're both of them are freaking like sick. Like if you're working with an artist, they're going to bring like what their energy is. And it's like this whole like accumulation of like amazing people coming together. And that's, that's, that's what I love the most. I think set does. Incredible. And before we go, can you just do a little recap of our, our challenge that we're going to set everybody? Okay. Girls, 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 whatever you think within that context, whatever comes to your mind, like, and that can be super feminine or super not feminine. Even if you're a guy and you're watching this, that, that or you're a, a male identifying, that doesn't like negate you from this conversation. You can still have an input in this. Um, and fabric, that's the only other. And it has to be a fabric of some sort and uh, just create a self-shoot with that. Self-shooting does not have to mean that you are in front of camera. You can shoot something else or you can shoot a body part or <laughs> I was like a robot um, or something like that, like, or, or an aspect of yourself. It, it can be anything. Girls, 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 though. But yeah, guys, get involved, try it out. And um, yeah, like for the first instance, do it for yourself. Um, and if you're happy to share it, share it with um, us on Instagram. You can message us on the DM um, or post it um, on your page and, and tag us. So whatever you feel comfortable with. And yeah, we hope to see your pictures and see what you guys create. And thank you so much for joining us today for the session. And thanks for Sheen for giving your time and your input. I can't wait to see, you know, your next self shoot. It's so inspiring what you're doing. And I just think it's incredible, like the content that you're putting out, how it looks like the creativity behind it. You can definitely see so much thought process and it's inspired me to want to try and be a bit more creative as well and try something different. So um, no, really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Guys, thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.